Deontay Wilder, you fought him. Yes. You lost to him. Yes, and I sparred um, him. Now, now, now you train him. Yeah. Tell us about this relationship. Um, he's like a brother to me. Um, when he lost his fight against Tyson Fury in Las Vegas, the second fight, obviously. Um, before that, I was always like a strategist in the camp anyway. And I always was a student of the game, and Deontay always respected that even after we fought or before we fought. So when the loss happened, not even two hours later, he called me and let me know what he wanted me to do, and that was to be his head trainer. And I never looked back ever since. And um, I remember when I was hired for the job, people had so much hoopla you can say about it, but I always actually believed that I'm overqualified for the job. And I, now I really believe that I'm actually more overqualified for the job than I did at the beginning. And because I'm very, I'm extremely confident in my teaching. I'm extremely confident in my knowledge. And I'm extremely confident in the, um, the vision that I have to elevate the game coming from a coaching standpoint. Yeah. yeah. So it's a very tight relationship. Yeah, very tight relationship. Um, and that, that don't mean perfection. That means we go back and forth. That means sometimes he say things I disagree with and vice versa. But one thing, the most important part, me and Deontay Brotherhood was like this, but our fighter and coaches and coach relationship is like this. Once he in the gym, he do what I say. He trusts me. Um, we strategize together, and um, he's going to be two-time heavyweight champion of the world as long as he keep developing. Uh huh. Well, you're taking so. that well. Simon's got another view on that. Yeah. Kate, Kate, you're taking Wilder. I must say, when he came in here, he came in here, Malik, not that long ago, yeah. uh, and he brought the place to a standstill. Yeah. Outside, he got mobbed Absolutely. downstairs. I mean, this is a very busy area of London. I think so too. Once he got up here, he was magnificent. He can perform. He can talk, Kate. Right? Uh -huh. um, is he as good as we think he is? I think so. Um, I think the the fight that I want to see that I think a lot of people have wanted to see for a long time is the Anthony Joshua fight. I think despite the fact that they have each taken losses, it's still just as interesting as it always was. Um, listen, I'm British, right? So some people might think I should root for Anthony Joshua, but I'm also team Malik. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I see him working with Deontay in the gym. Malik, I'm also blessed enough for Malik to train me. I don't know why he wastes his time mm -hmm. with me, but he does. Um, and and so time. I've been around them in, in camp and stuff. And I just think, uh, I mean, Deontay's power is special, right? Nobody's going to argue with that. And I think if, if they can catch Anthony Joshua, and I think the biggest question over Anthony Joshua currently seems to be, his mentality in the sport, right? Does does he have what it takes mentally to go into the ring against a Deontay Wilder and succeed? And and I think that Deontay definitely has. But that. that's a vast difference from beating Anthony Joshua and winning a world title mm -hmm. from either Alexander Usyk or or Tyson Fury for a fourth I, time. Hmm? For a fourth time, if him. Yeah, I mean, I think he got beat in all three fights. Mm -hmm. um, I think he got beat with his boots on in the second fight. I think he was better in the third fight, and I think he lost the first fight. Mm -hmm. But what difference... I mean, obviously, Mark Breland was in his corner, and Mark Breland was a very respected trainer. They seem to have fallen out. Were you part of Mark Breland's camp? Absolutely. Yeah? yeah. So what's the difference between what you brought to the... to the or you're bringing to the situation with Deontay and what Mark had previously? Well, I believe in drilling. I've never seen Mark Breland not just drill Deontay, and I say this with all due respect. I've never seen Mark Breland be as... speak the boxing language in drill not just Deontay any fighter um at the high level Mark Breland in my opinion was known for his outstanding amateur background and he had a very good it was a great world champion as well, yes absolutely Lloyd yeah. yes yeah. what do and, you mean by drilling uh what I mean by drilling is I believe that a fighter like Deontay he needed to do repetitiously the same thing over and over and over fundamentally sound every day to become better at it all fighters are not like that uh, some fighters you could just actually have certain sessions with and you could tell like, oh, wow, he make leaps just in those couple sessions. Deontay is not like that when it comes to development, but when it comes to his power, that's God given. Mm. So it's almost like the things I've never seen him do um, concerning Mike Breland being his trainer. And like, you know, I'm saying one thing, but you could actually look at my training with Deontay then look at Mark Breland's training with Deontay. With all due respect, it's night and day. Um, I'm not holding the pads and asking for one combination the whole round just because I know I make a lot of noise and people are going to be excited about it. No, we're going to do things with intent. We're going to do things responsibly, and we're going to do things the right way to the best of my ability that I believe I could teach it to him. And I just think it's night and day from what I teach Deontay and you know what Mark Breland teach Deontay. Actually, if we want to be quite frank about the whole thing, JDs, in my opinion, have taught Deontay more or have been... You could say a, a good teacher before me, before a Mark Breland. And Russ Amber was even around. 
Uh, Mark Breland did a good job with Deontay, but in my opinion, he didn't take him to the next level. Because it was level. an argument, and I would be in mm -hmm. that camp as well, mm -hmm. that technically, you're not going to like this. Please do. But technically, uh, uh, Deontay Wilder is one of the most inept mm -hmm. heavyweight champions that's been around. We No one denies the power, right. and no one denies the charisma. Right. I mean, the bomb squad thing's gone away a little bit, yeah, but yeah. I used to love all that, and I get it, yeah. right? But when he stepped in against Tyson, it's one thing beating Molina and Brazil and an old Luis Ortiz and getting yourself out of twice. trouble. Twice, yeah. Mm -hmm. But getting himself out of trouble each time with power mm -hmm. is another thing when you've got proficiency across the ring at you. You've got someone that's got the movement of, 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 of um, um, Usyk and who's got the power, movement, and ability that Fury has got. I'll, I make the allegation. You, you've gone for it. You may as well, well keep I'm going. I make the allegation. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's. I think he's a superstar charisma. I think he punches like you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. But I think he's a, a technically a very poor fighter. Yes. Tell me why I'm wrong. Oh, um, well, Malik's well, agreeing. Well, I, no, no, no. I didn't agree. I no, think, you didn't agree. No, I didn't agree. <laughs> but I, I, I think with I think Deontay. Don't take this to, to, to full limit. What I'm saying, but I think Deontay, when it comes to the naked eye of most people that watch him. It doesn't look appealing. If Mike Tyson threw left hook, right hook combination with his build, mm -hmm. when he was trying to get somebody out of there, it would look like, wow, he's trying to get that dude out of there. When Deontay, with his long limbs, is throwing left hook, right hook, and he's showing the same ages that a Mike Tyson, it's it comes, his body is built different. And I learned this from, you could say, Vitaly Klitschko and Vladimir Klitschko. People didn't appreciate Vitaly Klitschko, but he always was one of the most evilest fighters in the world. Mm -hmm. to Lennox, Lewis. <laughs> Lennox Lewis yeah. as well. Yeah. So some fighters, you actually, you may not understand until they're gone. So I'm going to give you an example. Most people, if you ask the average person what's their favorite fight from Deontay, from Luis Ortiz, both of the fights, the average casual fan would say the first one because Deontay was hurting this one. That when my favorite fight from Deontay is actually the second fight. So why do I say that? Because Deontay respected Luis Ortiz because he had to. So what do I mean by he respected him? He kept his chin behind his front knee. He moved him to the hand that he wanted to hit him with. He had to show patience. When Deontay really, really respects you, and I, and I believe this about Tyson Fury as well, when certain fighters respect you, it makes them extremely more dangerous. And mm. I think Deontay is one of them. But the technically sound part that Simon is speaking on, there, there's no secret that Deontay doesn't is not looking like extremely smooth or he has the you could say the the whereabouts physically as a muhammad ali or sugar ray leonard but what he do have is very unorthodox style he's very um dynamic with both hands in my opinion not just one and he's extremely lightning fast i used to box lennox lewis and his power was thudding and i said wow it hurts then i boxed vladimir klitschko and it was striking Deontay power is thudding and striking at concussive, the same time. Yeah. It's very concussive. Mally, you box these guys. We have boxed nobody. I'm quite <laughs> proud of it. 